love coming to the studio on Sundays because I'm the only one here in the whole building, pretty much. Good morning, everybody. Well, I don't know when you're listening to this, but it's morning for me. It's November 1st. The clocks just went back, which makes it one of my least favorite days of the year because it's already getting dark early enough and now it's going to be getting dark somewhere between four and five o'clock and that just gets worse all the way to december 21st and november is probably the most difficult month of the year for me every year december is probably the second most difficult month but november is tough it's hunting season so i can't be out running on the trails like i enjoy doing or filming doing my Bigfoot uh, so I'm pretty much stuck on the roads and indoor machines uh, there's a few trails I can do but it's sketchy because so many leaves have come down you can't see the rocks and the roots so it's really easy to get hurt this time of year so not fun short dark cold dreary days uh, we usually get snow in November that stays for the whole winter, but uh, can't count on that. Uh, the snow makes me happy. Anyway, it's race day, and I'm at the studio, going to do some work, and then head back to the family's house for Sunday brunch. Uh, we do a family brunch every Sunday, and um, my dad makes me vegan pancakes uh, today, he's making them out of cornbread mix, so they're going to be vegan <laughs> cornbread pancakes. And then my mom sometimes makes me, like, she takes spinach and tofu and she scrambles it up so that I can have things to eat with the family. So, the race today. Not excited. Well, I will tell you this. I am excited to see what takes place just before I run, which is Molly Huddle going for the American record in the one hour run, which is why this event is taking place. If you don't know who Molly Huddle is, she is one of America's greatest female distance runners. She held the American record in the 5,000 for quite some time and then Shelby Houlihan broke it maybe last year. Uh, Molly Huddle still holds the American record for 10,000 meters, and today she's going for one hour and possibly 20 kilometers. Uh, to see if she can get the record for both of those. So uh, her team put on this track event, and they thought, well, since we've got this track, we might as well have a couple other races as well. So there's a invite-only Masters women's 5k before Molly's race and an invite only Masters men's 5k after the race and that's it So I get to see Molly run before I do and I'm excited for that to uh, see how she does Hopefully I can film it. It's gonna rain though Race director emailed me last night and said bring foul weather gear <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm gonna be running in the rain in a 5k on the track Joy. <laughs> So, I'm sitting here in the parking lot listening to my book, The Master and His Emissary, and he's talking about the difference between the left hemisphere's experience of self and the right hemisphere's experience of self, or should I say creation of the experience of self. That the left hemisphere has a more objectified and willful sense of self that's where willpower and goal setting and planning comes from. And those of you that watch my videos know that I'm not a fan of goal setting or willpower or planning. I'm much more in the right hemisphere as I go about my processes and uh, try to accomplish things. And the right hemisphere is more broad, uh, your sense of self. It's more interconnected. Uh, it doesn't stand out as a single individuated thing. Uh, you are more, em em I was going to say empathic, not necessarily, but you're more empathetic. Uh, so you feel things more deeply on the right and you feel how your self is integrated into a community. And 
there's less of a desire to push or change, but more simply to be on the right. And because depression is categorized by right prefrontal dominance, which they call a right shift, and happiness is categorized by left prefrontal dominance, which they call a left shift. Since my brain has been kind of cooked into that right shifted state, and therefore depression is my default setting at this point in my life. So I'm going to feel my community. I'm going to feel my family. I'm going to feel the global or national, uh, whatever it is that we're currently feeling right now, just the, the pandemic, the, the riots, uh, social justice, etc., the election. Um, there's a lot to feel, and it's the right side that processes that and tries to put you into it. And it's hard to simply feel like, oh, it's my day, I'm going to do my thing. Ooh, lucky me, I get to be happy and, and go run a race and see Molly Huddle and maybe get to interview her. That would be a very much left dominant experience that it's all about me. Uh, whereas when you're stuck in the right, I don't want to say stuck. When you live in the right, it's very hard not to feel a sense of weight in everything that you do. Uh, and that's a big part of what depression feels like. <clears throat> everything, uh, I don't want to say it sticks together because that would mean that there are parts and that's the left side. It's just that you're in a bigger hole. You're in a kind of a field of um, social experience. You don't feel yourself as an individual so much as you feel yourself a, a part of a, a social feeling. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm thinking about right now as I sit in the car and how I might turn this into some tools for myself and for others. Okay, I'm gonna go upstairs, getting cold. I start most days by making a few batches of green tea, which I brew with well water from our house, which is the best tasting water I've ever experienced. And then I ice the tea and then drink it throughout the day. The view from the studio today, dark and moody. Kitty's taking a nap in the estate sale pile. This is little Foxy. Mandatory mask wearing here at the event. It's raining, it's 48 degrees. This is coming up on eight miles. Yeah, Molly, keep it going, keep it going. 42-42. Molly Huddle is out there killing it in the freezing rain and she's gonna smash the American record by quite a bit. She's dropping below 520 pace right now. Uh, she was running 520 pace for maybe the first seven miles, and now she's below that. So my goal today is to run the pace that she's running for the hour. And uh, my body is filled with fear and uncertainty right now, and it's creating the emotion of fatigue. So there's a part of my brain that's really scared about finding out what I can do. There's one part of my brain that's really hopeful and says, I think you're really strong. And there's another part of my brain that's saying you are going to embarrass yourself horribly. 1630, dude, you're lucky if you can run 1830. So I've got that going on and the result is it's hard for me to breathe. My legs feel like lead weights. This happens to me all the time, even when uh, I'm not uh, doing experimental training, but even when I'm on a regular training load, my body always does this in the warm up. And there's a part of me that wants to run away from the race, but I'm going to get out there and 
just take step after step and work on form and calm myself down and, and see what's possible. And within a lap or two, my body will, will know what it can do and it'll let me do it. But right now it's terrified. So uh, we'll go back out there and film Molly. Uh, last couple miles are gonna be awesome. It's raining hard now, it's dark. Go Molly! Go Molly! I'm back home and thinking about what happened at the race and what takeaways there are and what data I now have to work with as I move forward. And overall, I'm very happy with the result. Uh, it was a tough uh, event on many different levels. Uh, number one, it was raining the whole time I was there. Uh, I started watching the Masters women's race at 3.30, watched that, it was warming up. Then at four o'clock, Molly Huddle went after the American record for the one hour run. So I filmed that and was wet and freezing as I ran back and forth filming and then did an interview with her and then did my race at 5.15, except that a bunch of the guys in the race got lost on their warm-up. So they announced me and another guy, the only two guys there, they announced us and we moved up to the start line in our singlet, tank top, and short shorts. And uh, they're like, where is everybody? And I, I said, I don't know. I think they might've got lost on the warm-up because I ran with them for a bit, but then I turned around and uh, it was getting dark and that's what happened. It got dark and I got lost. So we waited for 15 minutes for these guys to show up and we're standing there in our shorts and singlets in freezing rain. And uh, yeah, that was not a lot of fun. Anyway, um, the race went out fast. The first three guys were well under five minutes for the first mile. I went through in a 5.10 with a group of three. And it felt really comfortable, which is a good sign. That is what interests me the most about this, because I'm not really running. I'm doing lots and lots of elliptical, but with a very slow cadence because of the difficulty. And I do my big foot walk, which is often a 17 to 20 minute mile. I'm moving very, very slowly. So to be able to knock out a, a 5, 10 mile very comfortably at my age is pretty extraordinary. Uh, and that tells me that I'm quite a bit below five minutes for a single mile, or just to put one all out. Uh, and that's fun. And mile two, I slowed down quite a bit. It was about a 520, which is the pace I wanted to run. And uh, then my arms got numb, really, really cold and numb. And I had a hard time pumping them and they got tired. It's a combination of numbness and tiredness. And that's something that was a bit of a concern for me because I'm not running. I'm not working my shoulders. I'm not working that arm drive. I'm working my legs, my glutes, my uh, quads, hamstrings and calves, but my arms aren't getting a workout. So that was the limiting factor for me today was the tiredness and the numbness in my arms from the cold and the rain. So that's something I have to work on. Uh, my heart rate was decent. It wasn't high. It was in the 160s. I think I averaged 165, which for a 5K is about 10 beats below where it normally should be. So that's a good sign. Uh, oh, by the way, I ran a 1705. Um, so the third mile, I slowed down quite a bit, but I'm very happy with that time because a 510 followed by a 520 uh, with almost no running training, that's pretty cool at my age. <laughs> so uh, now I've got to find a way to do some more arm work and obviously do some more running, but continuing with Bigfoot and elliptical and adding the running in to see what happens when I've got the endurance from the running and the strength from the other stuff I'm doing to put those together. Because basically right now I'm just going on strength. And by the way, Molly broke the American record. She shattered it by like half a mile. 
and uh, the interview is pretty cool. So I will post that tomorrow as well. Very, very nice woman. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.